pre-recorded. Ah, uh, this is pre-recorded. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, the camera's coming back on. Should I switch that back off? Yeah. Um. Just to make life a little bit easier. I got to get a... My camera's been so fidgety. I got to figure it out some more and stuff like that. But the power of being in COVID world. But uh, Casper, man... I do want to say, as I like to say this to anybody who comes on on the show, is welcome to the show, boss. It's actually a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Of course. And we were talking for a little bit beforehand and stuff. So yeah, I do want to say is, yeah, I do got a couple friends in the UK. <laughs> it, it's It's been, I feel for you guys over there. It was one of those things where they're like, oh, how's it going in America? And then lockdown happened. I'm like, oh, how's it going in the UK, buddy? <laughs> is it yeah. talking shit? It doesn't, have, it doesn't work out too well, does it? Yeah, it's been it's been pretty. Um, I mean, it, it is expect. I'm kind of glad they they've shut stuff down because it's 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 like a lot of people are following the rules, but then like uh, as you well know in the states, like a lot of people like are pretending like this thing isn't even happening. You know, they're just going about their day. So like to shut everything down and like you you literally can't do anything right now. You just have to stay indoors. You guys, you know, like if you if you go outside, it's like. You can only like go to the shop basically in your town. If you leave the town, you know, like if you if you're caught outside of your like your county or something, driving around doing stuff. If you have no reason to be doing it, you, you're gonna get a fine. You're gonna you, you know, oh oh yeah, like it's like you know you you, you got to stay where you got to stay basically. I didn't know about the fine. I didn't. No one told me yeah. about the fine. Wow. If you, you know, like if 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 I, if I was to go and visit my neighbor. And their neighbor phoned the police and they're like, hey, there's a dude next door in their house. Like, I would get fined like a thousand pounds or something. Do you know who needs that right about well. now? Huh? Do you know who needs that in the States right about now? <laughs> there, there's there's one state in particular that really, really needs that. Maybe two. And I, I think it's pretty famous. You probably know it. It's called Florida. And I've just I've killed any <laughs> fan that I've had in Florida now. Of a bit. I mean, yeah, my brother lives in Manchester, and Manchester's pretty bad at the moment mm-hmm. for stuff oh, like yeah. that. And there's a couple of places in the UK that, have, like, that were notoriously bad before mm-hmm. this second lockdown, and now it seems to have shifted. You know, like it's it's different places now. Um, but it, yeah, it's weird where we were actually. It kind of sucks for us because the 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 county that we're in, like, they had this tier system where it was like tier one, tier two, tier three, and like tier one was like, you guys are good, you, you're following the rules. You can go to the shops, you can go to cafes, you just have to wear a mask. And we were tier one, you know, like we were like the good tier. But then like, there was other places in the UK that were like tier five or like tier four, sorry, or tier three. I can't remember. There's so many tiers now. It's like tiers for fears. And like, you know, like they were so bad to the point where it was like, and like London should have been tier five, but they were like, as ah, London, we'll keep it tier three for some reason, because why not? Um yeah, everything just went to shit. So, like, we're all yeah. in tier five now. We're all in, like, massive lockdown because other people couldn't, <laughs> you know, like, couldn't yeah, follow. Yeah, that's the problem with it. You're like, well, guys, come on, come on. Although, kind of in positive news a little bit, too, because um, it is a new year. Might as well keep it a little bit positive. You mentioned before that, like, comics are coming back. I want to say I think a lot of well, you guys are on lockdown right now. I mean, America's facing its own batch of issues fucking from Oz at this point. But. We, I want to say, like, I noticed a lot of things are, like, very slowly coming back. And I work in the film, animal fields, and also comics. And I'm seeing a lot of things in animal stuff never goes away. But film's been coming back slowly. And then comic book industry's been doing some really good recovery, I want to say. I hope so. It feels like it. I mean... yeah. It goes in waves. Like here in the UK, it's like kind of impossible, and it, it, you know, it's, it it really sucks for like the 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 stores over here because you know, like to to get comic books in people's hands now, it is literally, you know, you're you're sending them out to yeah. your customers because people can't actually go into stores anywhere in the UK now to pick up a comic book, and that, that you know, and then we've had like the EU as well, like the like it, it's uh sorry like brexit you know like it's a whole thing and so it really sucks right now for comics here in the uk for people trying to pick up comics it's a lot slower than it would have been you can't just go in on a wednesday like i'm i'm, I'm fairly certain that most people in the state you, you can still like go into stores in the states right and just pick up comics um depends where you're at and some okay. stores don't do it i mean a lot of what have they been doing and in the heat of the apocalypse when that was a thing um it would be pickup so you just drive up pull into a parking spot or in the parking lot, 
You'd call them, let you know you're there, give them a box number and anything extra that they want that you want to get picked up, like a, a trade pair back or something like that, or an issue maybe they have. And then they come out, they bring an iPad on the slider, slide it on the little cube thing on the iPad, give you your stuff in a plastic bag, wearing a mask and stuff like that, and then yeah, you get it. I've heard places in the UK were doing that. I mean, before the second lockdown, I don't know if they're still doing that same practice, but that, I, I, I really hope. some stores are able to do that, you know, in, in some way or form. There's still some sort of pickup option. You would hope. Yeah, you would hope, because it's one of those things where, I mean, UK stores, I don't know how they were doing before, but I mean, like, in America, like, there's been so many, at least in my state in Arizona, like, before lockdown, we've had so many closed down, and then we had a lot closed down during lockdown and stuff. But it's it is kind of I see the light at the end of the tunnel, though. I, I really do, and I think it's. I mean, as we're both comic professionals here, I mean, have you seen it with anything that you've been working on, maybe future projects and stuff like that, or is it still kind of limbo for you? Um. Well, it's 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 weird. Like the numbers that we did on on the first issue of homesick pilots were like better than any book that i've had released like even at marvel or like oh, wow. you know like it was it was it was like probably one of the the biggest issues that i'd done like in, in terms of sales but we had like a lot of variants and i know like a lot of first issues again you know was returnable so that was like that was awesome but then like issue two was kind of like just not you know like kind of normal for what i was used to doing a creator own book or or something you know like along those lines so like it, it's weird because like i was like okay so this seems normal to me now like this is like but then you you know like before we did our first issue you were seeing like crossover doing like over 100k and you know like in, in department of troops so i was like wow these are huge numbers and like you know we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic this is this is this is really inspiring you know this is this is really cool to see yeah. um you know hopefully this stuff keeps up um, it was cool to see, like, and, you know, and, and to see those books sell out and go to a second printing was really, really, like, inspiring to see because that meant that people were going out and picking up the issues, and there was demand for it. Like, the stores were getting these 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 books in, and people were going and picking them up. So that was really cool to see. Um, so I'm hopeful. I'm really hopeful to see like these things carry over and that people are able to like, uh, you know, like more importantly like the fact that there's so many more creator and books coming out now as well like because i feel like people probably had a lot more time to create these things now like they, they, they yeah. <laughs> but like it's, yeah it's to see like so many cool creator and books coming out right now like a like a like a wealth of them coming out they're all really good and that's that's really cool to see um as well as you know like uh, you, you marvel and your dc as well there's like there's so much to choose from now well it's i true. say so much like i feel like there's a there's like a like a, a a decent amount giving the circumstances to like yeah the, but there's always been a huge amount though i think nowadays there's more there's way more also too i want to say congratulations on selling out and doing all that by the way with your creator own book because that's a huge accomplishment i wanted to say that like that's a huge accomplishment man i mean it's i mean like they they, they were like i mean like issue one did like like a well enough for myself and Dan that like we were we were like we were like happy because like doing a creator own book is like it's really scary like the you know like I, you know I did Angelic and Limbo at, at Image before and I was relatively new to this industry I didn't really understand how how these things work you know like we, we had no idea what we were doing when we went into Limbo so we didn't know how to market it we didn't know anyone we were like it was our first book like we didn't know anyone in the industry basically mm. Um, and, you know, that book was, you know, we, we made a bit of money off that book when it was coming out in singles, not like Lowe's, not like you see people do or people that would even make a living off of this. It was nothing like that, but it was enough for us to get more work, if you know what I mean. So it's, yeah, it's kind of cool to, a, you know, like to, to do a book now where it feels like, hey, we, we may actually make some cash out of this book. You know, like, it may actually like, it could actually be a series, you know, like it could be something that we can continue to work on, which is, which is exciting. Cause like, that's kind of what you want when you do a, a career and book and like the reception oh, yeah. for it as well. So, so that's been really inspiring, but you know, I don't want to jinx it. Like you said earlier. <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. That's the thing. You don't want to be like, we were like, doing all this good work. And next thing you know, it's like, yeah, we got canceled. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like, you know, like next week, everyone goes on a lockdown over the whole world or in the, and then like, everything stops so it's like it, a million things could happen between now and the next issue launching oh it's um, true it's true uh, but i mean that's the so thing about... it, 
for for the time being, I'm just going to write this. You know, it's it's all it's all, you know, like at the end of the day, we've done a really cool book, regardless of sales. Like I I was ne I never really came into this for the sales or the money. Like when I when I when I when I made these comic books, so I think it's just like a cool bonus to be able to like feel that there is some kind of security blanket around this series a little bit more than maybe something that I'd done before, which is which is a nice feeling. I feel like that if people continue to like it then they'll continue to support the book and that's like that's that's really cool because we want to keep telling the story as much as we can yeah, i'd hate to see it like end you know like after five issues and oh and my be god done. yeah oh my god i I'll, all seven of my books that are right which don't ask me how i have time in my life anymore but it's <laughs> like uh, um that's the thing that's like when you're able to make some money from it it's great but Often it's people, people are like, oh my god, you have seven books. I'm like, yeah, six are out, and we've done the digital stuff, and go as soon as to have that, and video games, and all that jazz like that, and you know, and then it's like working in Animal Field as well at an animal hospital, and with exotics and stuff, and doing stuff in film when that was a thing, and they're like, oh, you must be rich. I'm like, you know, all those jobs you would think, but all of those are three different professions where you do not go in it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, I mean, it, so it equals out a little bit, but in the end, it's kind of like, I'm not driving a Lamborghini or a, a BMW anytime soon. No. <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm fairly sure if you if you were successful enough in comic books, but yeah, maybe you could buy a Lamborghini. I mean, oh, oh, there's <laughs> one man who's driving a Lamborghini in comic books. That man's sure Jim Tom Lee. Tom McFarlane bought one in the 90s, right? That was the... The famous, I can't remember. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm, but like, I don't no, remember. No, that's, tr that's true. If I was like <laughs> someone who created Deadpool or something like that, like a Rob Liefeld, yeah, probably I'd be driving one, but shit. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've known people at DC and Marvel. No one's ever got me a job, so I don't know. <laughs> um, Yeah, no, that's, so, I mean, that's the thing. Like, we've, it's nice to go up to paycheck and one or two, but. Ending a story prematurely, there's no other greater pain for a, a writer or creator, I think. I mean, that's what we had to do with um, with uh, Limbo, our first book at Image. Like, again, like, we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know anyone. That book may have gone differently if we had the support. We, we had planned to do a an ongoing series. And then I think by the time issue three came out, like, the solicitor had been changed in previews to miniseries. So we were like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, that's unexpected, but all right. Like, we were like, oh, I thought this was an ongoing. So we're like, we were kind of like, oh, I guess we wrap this up. So we kind of just wrapped the whole thing up. And that was that. And we kind of, like, had to think of an ending on the spot, kind of oh, tie the whole thing yeah. up. And, like, we were really happy with what we did. Um, mm -hmm. We were really happy with the way, like, that, that series, like, ended because we kind of we kind of always had like a, a tie up i think even when we pitched it we were like this could be an ongoing but like if it's not we have a way we can tie it up so we had to do the way that we had to tie it up real which quick way better which is one i think something they want to hear and then two is that makes for a hell of a story man is when you know an ending that's a good story because if you don't know the ending you're just gonna go on and on and on and on and then you're gonna do shit people don't like and then you're gonna make it yeah know your ending is like a key i often tell writers actually yeah i mean i think we kind of know the ending well we know the ending terms of pilots as well like that was one of the things that we, we we've, we've already like worked out the beats for the 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 series at least up until like the end you know like until like arc like initially when we came in we're like okay three arcs to begin with we we planned these three arcs out we know exactly where it's going over these three arcs so like to get there would be amazing because like it's going to be some really cool stuff. But um, yeah, it would, it would, it would. Um, but like, yeah, there's an ending as well. There's there's a way that we know how this is going to finish, which is really cool. I mean, we've had all this time in lockdown to kind of work this stuff out. It's like, true. From, from the initial conception of the book, like from from when we first came out of it, we were like, um, uh, like pitched it. Um, we had and you know like we had like ideas of where we were going to take the book but we've had so long to kind of this thing's been in the stew for such a long time and we've been throwing stuff at it and like come, kind of coming up with how we were going to do things and what would be cool and uh, yeah it's it's, it's going to be awesome it's I, I feel like it's going to be it's going to go it's going to go to some cool places i get to draw some really cool stuff which is which is really cool like yeah oh yeah i mean you know I'm very curious about something because, you know, I looked into it a little bit here. I'm like, how, I, how long has this man been in comics? You've not been in comic book industry that long, actually, if you look at it. 
So uh, it's it's two, it's nuts. I mean, how long? When did you first start? 2015, I guess. Like Limbo came out at the end of 2015, so it came out yeah. like November 2015. So that was my first like US published book. Um, and then in 2016, I did. Um, well, I had Limbo coming out, but while I while Limbo was coming out in the stores, I did um, an Assassin's Creed book at Titan in the UK. Like that was like my next thing that I followed on from, and then I did another. Then I went straight back to Image. I did um, uh, Angelic with Simon Spurrier, and then from that I did Doctor Afra for a spell, and then I did. God, I feel like I'm missing something. Then I did Peter Cannon Thunderbolt with Kieran Gillen at Dynamite. Yeah. And then I did more Star Wars at Marvel. So it, it was kind of like jumping in between like bits of Star Wars. And, and then... I, if, if I remember right, you did Dark Souls too. That's right. Yeah. Dark Souls. Yeah. yeah. I did um, with Dan, actually, with Dan Waters. Um, there must have been something else, which is really bad because maybe the, I, I really hate to think that there was a writer on here that I did a series with this set there. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Hey, oh, so... our amazing series that we did together and i'm just I'm totally blanking on it i mean there was there was there's been like more more than that you know like i've done a lot of minis um in between but yeah it's been it's been great like it's been really cool to to work with all these these different creators and and do all these things um but yeah it's been kind of kind of non-stop as well which is which is which is awesome oh i did well yeah i did like a, a ghost rider short as well which was cool um mm. so yeah there's been like there's been like little bits in between that um that i've done which is um, cool yeah it, like... it, i guess six yeah so i've been doing this for about six years that's not bad for six years that's pretty good i mean you've dipped your hands in a lot of stuff and create your own shit too man like i'm clapping over here for you because that's the dream to be able to be like, yeah, I'm going to do my own stuff. And then also I'm going to touch like Star Wars and like hit video game franchises. You know, I like that's that's good. Like that's honestly like that's obviously proves that once you get started and people often say like, well, how do I keep going when I get into my profession? Like, or in the comics and stuff like that. I'm like, well, once the first domino falls, it, it they keep going. Yeah, it feels it, it definitely feels like that. It definitely feels like I mean, like going to a lot of conventions um i mean when we did well, again like when we did limbo i think like when we kind of realized that we were going to be doing a book of image and no one knew who we were I, it definitely felt like if we're going to do this we could just do you know like we could tell this story like very very safely and and i was very like i i didn't really know how many chances i was going to get to tell this story or do something like this so we made it as weird as possible you know like myself and dan were just like we're going to make this book really loud really unapologetic like really in your face like silly colors silly themes silly characters like something that you, you, you wouldn't look like a lot of the other things on the shelf so that was kind of a, a thing going in so that's what we did and, and and for better or worse it kind of stuck out with some people you know so like that's how i got my first email from marvel and like idw you know they were they picked up the book and they're like hey we you know we really we really dig your your work on this like would you be interested in doing some some covers or something like that and i was like ah oh, this is this is cool like i didn't even have to reach out to these guys they just picked up the book and they emailed me so that that was really cool that was a cool that was a cool feeling it felt like limbo was like kind of like my calling card like that i didn't i mean you know, like the way image works, like uh, it wasn't, you know, as a creator and book. So I made that book entirely f for free. You know, like I did five yeah. issues in my spare time over a whole like 18 months. You know, it wasn't like someone was paying me to make this book. And then everyone's like, hey, this dude's really lucky. He got paid to make this book. And then he and like off the back of it, he got he got some. It was like a really, 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 really expensive like, time consuming cv and <laughs> portfolio <laughs> like that's what it felt like you know it was like a, a really cool it was cool to make your own book but at the end of the day like you know it sold, it sold okay we made a we, we made like a small amount of money on it which is which is cool because like we, we were new but like but what we got off the back of that book is like priceless you know like the stuff that we you know like the, the career opportunities we got off the back the back it, it felt worth it you know like in the in the long run it felt like hey you know like 
okay, it wasn't like a financial success, but like for career wise, like myself and Dan, like Dan's over at DC doing like all this crazy, you know, like he's working on like, he just did like Superman and Wonder Woman. He's just done his whole stint yeah. on Lucifer. Like he's been, you know, like he was able to get all that work off the back of that book, you know, in the same way that I was able to like go off and do Star Wars stuff and and stuff with Kieran and Peter Cannon and, and whatnot. So it was really, you know, like it, it felt, it felt like it was a, it was it was worth the, the sweat and the tears, you know, like the blood, sweat, and the tears on that book. Um, there's a but there's a friend of mine, and I'm trying to blanket his name, and he's gonna listen, and he's gonna call me and be like, "You asshole, it was me." Um, I just it's one of those you can't remember the face or picture. They uh, he often said, "He's like Dakota, you're often gonna get this one book. Like you do a lot, but there's gonna be one book. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, you get that one book that once it's out there, it, you're, it's it's your uh, tree seed that once you plant it, the tree will grow. And I'm okay. and like, what? And he's like, yeah, that that book. Once you put it out there, that's going to be the thing where everything's going to spout from. Not wrong, by the way. <laughs> Not wrong in the slightest. No, yeah, I could. I, I feel that. I mean, yeah, you have to. It's weird because I've always I've always heard people like talk about breaking into comics in, in lots of different ways. Um, you know, some people are like, hey, you just need to like, you just get start writing or just get start drawing or take your portfolios to places. And like, I've done a lot of portfolio reviews before we'd even had limbo and and they helped in a weird way because i you know like i've met with like marvel and dc and vertigo like i did portfolio reviews with with a lot of editors before we did limbo and they were like hey your work's cool like but you know like i don't really know what to do with you you know your work's a bit weird so i was like okay thanks but image you know like i did portfolios with image uh with eric and um and he really liked my stuff. He kept saying, like, oh, your stuff's, you know, like, it, it's weird. And, you know, like, have you ever thought about, like, pitching, like, pitching a series to us? Mm. Um, you know, and that's kind of how I went to Dan. And I was like, hey, we should, we should, we should pitch something to Image, you know, like, we should, we should put something together, like, do our best, like, do something that we, we really want to do. Like, it's something really cool and pitch it to Image, because I think they would look at it, because they pretty much said, like, you should, you should pitch something to us. So we did. I like. I just imagine in their in their thought process or how this went in some weird other world way was they're like, oh yeah, and you guys, you guys pitch the book, and they're like, it's weird. There's a pause. Welcome to Image. <laughs> Thank you so very much. They like that, but yeah. <laughs> it was more like we 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 pitched it directly to Eric in person at a convention, and then um, and then. Uh, we gave it to him, and then I don't think we heard from him for a couple of weeks, and we were like, "Oh, this is the end of our careers." Like, yeah. Oh, that's the <laughs> worst. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, I oh I hate that shit so much. It happens in the film industry too. You do an yeah, audition, we just, or you put yeah, in for a job. Can happen. We just moved on with it, and then we got an email through to be like, "Hey, we want to do this book at you know, like we want to do this book at Image," and we were just like, "Oh, now what do we do?" You know, like we don't know anyone. We don't know what to do. You know, we don't know how to find a letter. We don't know how to find a designer. We didn't, yeah. you know, we were just doing this whole thing by ourselves, and it was, it was, it was fun and it was scary. And like, part of me wishes, like, oh, I wish we could have gone back and like done things differently. We did everything wrong. Like Dan always says this as well. Like we did absolutely everything wrong when we made that book. You know, we priced it too low. We, <laughs> you know, like we figured if we made it like three ninety nine that no one would buy it, so we made it like two ninety nine, which like <laughs> meant we were getting a lot less money, and <laughs> we Oops. used the most expensive print on the book. You know, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> we did like everything wrong that you you could have done on a or, you know like on a back end book, and it's okay, it's kind like the book's cool. You know, I mean, like it was worth it. it. I mean, it was it was it was worth it, and it's it's a good comedic story of like hey, we learned everything not to do <laughs> on our yeah, first go around. Yeah. We, we well, there was lessons learned, you know. We learned from our mistakes on that first book. So like, yeah, I feel like five years later, we've we've done we've both done like Dan just did Coffin Bound like two years ago, a year ago, image as well. So we we'd learned a lot about how to market and do a creator own book this time and what to expect, you know. Um, we, you know, like we have the final order cut for uh, issue three coming up on Monday, and um, you know, like, we, it, it's that dreaded, like, oh my god, what are the numbers going to be like? You know, you're going to be up all night just thinking about, you know, like how well this book performed, and is this where it starts to dip, or is this the end of the book? Or it's the dreaded pre-night j- jitters of a creator. 
because no yeah. matter what it is, you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh my God, what's going to happen here? Like, is it, is it going to do well? Like every time I know an issue is going to come out digitally or online or something like that, social media, whatever is coming out, or we have like a big meeting thing, a pitch that we're doing, or it's a, maybe a, a film premiere or something like that too, or a test screening or something like that. And it's like, every time I'm just sitting there in my bed, like, fuck, fuck. Okay. I don't Okay. Is it going to be good? Is this person going to like it? Oh, is, it, is this audience going to clap at the end here? What if they hate it? Oh my God, I'm done for. They're going to hate it. Oh no, they're going to hate it. It's like, yeah. oh, crap, we got it. How can we, how can I take it back? <gasps> I can't shit. No. I think that was the only other, because like, this is my first career in books since 2000 and I want to say 17. You know, it's been a while since I did a career in book, because between then it was just, I was doing Star Wars and I did Peter Cannon, um, which were, you know, they were licensed book so I didn't I didn't have that stress of you know I wanted the book to perform well I wanted people to like the book but like the like how much it sold wasn't always like the thing that was keeping me awake at night you know like yeah. I know that Peter Cannon didn't perform as well as we'd hoped or maybe Dynamite had hoped it would um because it was Kieran but like it was still like ridiculously like praised you know like it was received really well by by people which was cool like in the end of the day that's all i really cared about like that people really enjoyed the book yeah. with that but then when you're doing a creator own book you have that extra anxiety and stress of like oh shit like this thing this this has to do well like financially or the book's dead yeah you know like this book has to sell because if it's not selling well then the stores aren't going to keep ordering it and so there is that you know not only does the book have to be good, but it has to be able to like maintain a readership. So there's that edit, there's that extra anxiety like thrown in because it all falls on you to to get this book to do well. You know, it, it it falls on your ability to sell a book. So there is that crippling fear. Every <laughs> yeah, every it, it, it's book, true. You're doing everything that you can. It's you true. know, I felt so bad on the lead up. Like spa, so, like so spammy. I felt like I probably lost so many followers on like on like Twitter and stuff because, you know, like for like weeks leading up, I was like, hey, the book's coming out, the book's coming out, this book's coming out, and I just thought people were just like, oh, you know, shut the fuck about this book, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you, that's the thing. It's like you think that when you're doing it. Like I think that all the time with stuff I do, and I'm like, wait a minute, people actually give a shit. They just don't ever like it or say anything about it. And it's like, oh, okay, you feel like you're talking into the void when you're not. It's like, oh, I'm just talking into the fucking wall. Uh. It's, um, yeah, it, it it can feel like that. It definitely feels like you're just screaming. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, you're, like, you're like, hey, look at my thing. It's a cool thing. What? It's a cool thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's the power of social. Yeah, like, uh, sorry, I felt like we went on a tangent from the industry picking up, but like, yeah, it doesn't. No, no, feels it's like... totally fine. It's so, trust me, if you listen to previous episodes on the show, I once, I've had on like, <laughs> I've had on people from like the Supergirl TV show, and we had a tangent about uh, the UK jelly beans versus, because it was from David Harewood, it's from the UK, UK jelly beans versus American jelly beans. <laughs> we were having a tough competition too. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that. I thought the UK jelly beans were the same. Oh no! As... Apparently, there's a difference. Yeah. There's a difference. Ask David. There's a difference. <laughs> oh no! Uh, he was saying like there was something different. It was a different type of brand or along those lines or something like that. Really? No, yeah. there's like I don't think we even really got jelly beans over here for a really long time. Like I think they. I remember when they kind of. I remember having the in the states a lot i remember they kind of like just turned up here and i'm jelly, jelly beans here in the uk now that's that's crazy <laughs> i was in the beginning um, of quarantine but, too but you know i yeah i you know i'm i gotta ask and i know you probably gotta ask this sort of thing a lot with it but how was it like you say like it was lower stress level and stuff but there had to be of some stress level going on to a star wars comic especially <laughs> space <laughs> Indiana uh, Jones no, 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 and no. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm just like huge on Star Wars like it was a dream so yeah. there was no stress whatsoever like, really it was I think maybe the hour or trying to trying to there was a lot of like tight there would be a lot of like tight turnarounds every now and again because you, you, you know like doing a page on Star Wars or drawing something has to go through like a lot of hands before it can get approved um so sometimes you would get a page back like quite close to a deadline and they were like oh hey 
alien or like this shit doesn't look right it needs to needs to be like i mean like stress wise like i enjoyed the hell out of it i was just saying to my wife yesterday like i would love to do more star wars comic comics at one one point because i just felt so happy drawing them like there was never an instance when i was drawing a star wars but where i was like oh this is work you know it was like i was just grinning from ear to ear drawing star wars like all the time it, it was just like so much fun just to, like, and i like i always felt like even when i would send stuff in like because i was such a nerd with like detail anyway like with even within my own comic books or like pop culture references like when it came to like getting something right there was only ever a few occasions where i would like make a mistake because like i was so particular about the detail something and on a lightsaber <laughs> or like like the triangular chess piece on darth Vader is a what's the word like under under his helmet he kind of has like that chest guard you know what i mean like the silver yeah, and black yeah, yeah, lines yeah. i made it a little bit pointy once i think they were the only two notes i ever got got back that were like hey this is this is kind of off but, um, oh, wow that's a, that's that's some specific uh, notes right there shit yeah they were like little tiny notes like that but usually it was like just fun it was it was loads of fun i mean like we did we did we did do things that like i i know that Star Wars anyway, because it's always kind of 50-50, or maybe you're not even that, it's like 30, you know, 35, 35, 35, or whatever division, you know, like, mm-hmm. there's so many just like, there's so many like fractions of fans in Star Wars that like different things that you know, like another fan base won't like, if you know what I mean. So like you know, Afra, for instance, has like a really solid fan base, but there's people that, that like Star Wars that don't like Afra for reasons. Fools. Um, on the show, I mean, well, no, like, I'm not gonna say um, cool. she's she's good, she's good and bad. Um, but yeah, like I say, like the last issues, I I I know that a lot of people weren't happy with with like her interaction with Vader and possibly like issue forty because she kind of she kind of tricks him, and I think a lot of people, you know, like Vader's this badass that shouldn't really be tricked by a human with no Jedi mm. powers type. Thing. That was kind of a, that was a point of discussion that a lot of people got upset about, and there was other people that got upset about like teasing that she might possibly die, but like just little things like these things, you know, like it's not really. I'm I'm not the writer on the book. Like I know that Sai got a lot more of a lot more fans, you know, like asking him questions about things, but it was never anything bad, you know. Like there was never anything about the book that was like, oh hey, you know, I know you know I've got friends that write stuff for like Marvel and DC, and they get some like they get some funky DMs from fans of books. You know, like saying, "Oh yeah, I've heard, I've read some of those with friends." And oh yeah, them, you know, so in the next issue and stuff, and I'm like, "Oh, you know, like that's crazy." Um, so like, no, no, it was just just a pleasant, fun experience working on Star Wars. Just like loads of fun. Like, loads, yeah, like great. I miss it. You know, like I love doing creator own stuff, but like just to just to dip into that world and get to draw like Luke and Vader and Afra and Chewie and, and whatnot and, and Falcons and and even the covers like it's just it was just fun it was really fun it was fun it was fun sending it in it was fun having the editors say like this looks cool you know and then like Lucas like hey this looks cool like it, it was cool to be a part of all of that it was never stressful it was, it was more like that's like dreams come that yeah it felt like if, if it, you know it it, it 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 was a dream gig it really was. And you know, like I would, uh, I would love to find time to do some more after Homesick Pilots is is is, has wrapped. If there's ever an opportunity to do more, or if I ever get the time to do more, I would, I would, I would probably take it. I imagine just because it was so much. I I have to be I have to be honest with you about something though, man. Uh huh. You are the best person on the stress level. I've talked to buddies of mine who I've had on the podcast, and they're like, yeah, we'll talk about Star Wars. They wanted to come on and talk about it. They've worked on Star Wars comics before. You are the best one out of everyone I've known to handle the stress level of working on Star Wars comics. 100%. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, you were taking it in stride. I'm like, oh my God, he's really happy. But I, you're the best way to take the stress level of working on Star Wars. Because they're all like... <laughs> Oh my God! How, how am I gonna do this? Oh my God! The fans and all this stuff like that. Meanwhile, you're like, dream come hey, true. With, let's with, do this. Were these writers though? Maybe, maybe that's why writers I mean, like, and I, artists. It was both. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, they uh, fucked writers I, I, and I, artists. I imagine being a writer on Star Wars is like hugely stressful. Like, because you're, yeah. you're, you're trying to appease like a huge fan base of like differing opinions. So I can understand that, that you know, you want to you want to make sure that everyone's happy. You want to make sure that everyone gets something out of it. So I can understand that that's like super stressful. Whereas like for me, it's just like I, I just get like sent the script and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, like the Manelli and Falcons and the, sorry, I Millennium Falcon is in this uh, in this issue or something like that. I, I just get excited reading through the script to see what I get to draw, basically. Yeah. And that's oh, like... yeah. <laughs> that's like the best way to do it because you're like, oh my god, I'm actually reading this. Like, you're not. It's the thing of like you see it all the time. I mean, you can't go anywhere without seeing Star Wars, and you see it all the time, and you're like, oh, it'd be cool to work on the movies or something tied in. And they're like, oh, here's a script, and I'll bring it to life. Like, wait, what? Like, yeah, you are working on Star Wars. You're not just admiring or watching you're working on like though you put those two words together or three words together of working on star wars it you just get giddy you just get happy as hell i do remember that one of the my artist buddies i had on the podcast so you might get a kick out of this he was so scared because he's like man i didn't know if i was good if i colored luke right because he was also an inker on it and he's like he's like yeah, i don't know like what if i drew this so bad like he's like i just thought maybe if I drew this like this. It'd be cool. But I think the fans are going to hate it so bad. Like, no, you're fine. <laughs> I did the um, I did the issue uh, where uh, Jar Jar Binks gets the lightsaber. You know, like he's holding the lightsaber. And that oh image was God, like. That had to be death threats. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, like, that was like everyone was like super cool about it. It was really good, funny. Good. Like it just got it just there was like a huge. I mean, like, there was, like, a lot of fans that were like, oh, my God, like, it's true, he's a Sith Lord, you know, because, like, that's been, like, a big theory for such a long time. So, like, we played into that a little bit as well before. Like, there was, like, an image of him with, like, he's, like, shadowed and you can just see his eyes and, like, he's got the lightsaber in his hand. So that was kind of fun to just kind of, like, poke at that a little bit. And then the next one is just, like, him looking really cool with the lightsaber. And then he's, like, super goofy, you know, like, in the next panel, he, like, drops it because he, he can't hold it properly. Um, yeah, but now, like people, were, like people were actually really cool with that. They were like, "Hey, you know, like he deserves some kind of, um, you know." I think a lot of the fans, you know, are so. Def- this came out around the time of like the Last Jedi, so I think so many fans were so decide, you know, like divided by that movie at the time mm-hmm. that bringing Jar Jar back at that point and giving him a lightsaber, everyone was like, "Hey, this is a this is a neat distraction. Let's go back to something <laughs> we used to hate." <laughs> and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Hey, it's cool. <laughs> it's it's oh my god. You know what? I almost bought a there was I was at Target the other day, one of the stores here, and I was seeing the Star Wars the Black Series figures, and there was a couple from Mandalorian that just came out. Cause I was like, you know what, let's check out the toy aisle. So it was with me and my girlfriend, shout out to you, I love you. And we're sitting down there with and I'm like, oh yeah, they got this from the Mandalorian, or oh, they got him from the Mandalorian. Cool, cool, cool. And I ones I was going to pick up, and I saw one, and I was tempted to really, really buy it. It was Jar Jar Binks in the Black Series. Oh, that's I, cool. I I've, got, I've, I've, got, I've got Vader. I've got some Stormtroopers. I've got, yeah, I've got Afra, and I really wanted to get hold of, um, hey, Jar Jar Binks would be a cool one to get hold of. I need to get some more, though. I've got Rex. Oh, um, you've got Captain Rex? Yeah, I got right. Oh, I hate you. Uh, I wanted them so for so long. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh I've always uh, Rex is going to be a tattoo of mine actually pretty soon here. Um, I do have. I just acquired it the other day though. Is a this is the part of the podcast, folks, where we talk about our collections. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got a Funko Pop Ahsoka from the Clone Wars. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was they were releasing Obi Wan, Yoda, <laughs> Anakin, and Ahsoka. <laughs> Huh? My kids were really like. I remember my, my daughter was really into Funkos for a little bit. Like she does. We don't actually own any Funkos, but I remember it just became this thing that she kept seeing everywhere. And she was like, "I want a Funko." She was really into Teen Titans at the time, so she was like, "I want Teen Titan Funkos." And like Raven was her favorite character, but you could just not find the Teen Titans uh, Raven anywhere in Funko form. It was always like some weird, you know, like a uh, Injustice <laughs> video game version yeah, of her. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> but sweet but yeah man i'm glad i'm glad you took it in good strides though i really am oh it's <sighs> also too you see that jar jar finger figure look it up when we're done here you may like i think you might like it <laughs> i think when it's just shits and giggles we'll be like you have a jar jar in your collection i do 
Yeah, I like Jar Jar. I've, I've come to, uh, you know, like I've, I've I've made my peace with that character. I watched, I, I rewatched the entire when I think when when uh, why can't I think of the name of that last movie now? Oh, the Rise, Rise of Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah, there we go. When when that came out on Disney Plus, like I did, like all six movies back to back, you know, like in while I was working, You're just gone. to kind of get. Yeah, I just wanted to feel like the entire, tr- you know, like the what, what do you call it? It's like um, it's not a trilogy, is it? Like triple trilogy, I guess. Um, I call it the dinology or something like, like that. that. Yeah, I wanted to feel. I, I wanted to feel like how it felt, you know. Like I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to experience how it felt, like from beginning to end, telling the story um, of the Skywalker saga. So like, and. I was 16 when Phantom Menace came out. So I went to see that at the cinema and I was like massively hyped and I loved it. You know, like when I went to see that as a 16 year old, I was like, hey, this is cool. Like I grew up with Star Wars. I wasn't old enough to appreciate him when they first came out. Like I think Jedi came out in 83 and I was born in 83. So like oh. that movie was done when I when when I was born. It, it, literally, it was in the cinemas like the day I was born. Like it was showing in cinemas like w- when I was born mm. um, that summer. So like, I got to, you know, like I, I was like secondhand first generation Star Wars hand-me-downs, you know, like I used to get the toys as a kid and, you know, like we had like the Ewok movies, like they, they had a theatrical release of the Ewok movies in the UK. So like, I think like, I think I forget what the second one's called, Caravan of, or the first one, something or other. Like that was one of the first films I saw at the cinema. Well, if, if not the first film that I saw at the cinema was a, was an Ewoks. <laughs> I mean, that's good slash bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my dad had to take me out like an hour into the movie because that big, like, giant wolf rat thing turns up in their village and starts, oh, like, yeah. massacring the Ewoks. And, like, apparently I had a fit and my dad just had to take me home. Like, couldn't even get through the whole movie. So I never, never, I was about five. So it was like, yeah. But, like, you know, like, on my fifth birthday, I got the Millennium Falcon. Like, uh, I saw it in a, in a, um, in a charity shop or like like you say in the states a thrift shop um it was in the window um you know and some kid had obviously already owned this it was from probably from a new hope or empire strikes back and um so it was quite old at that point it was probably about seven years old you know like or more so it was like it probably wasn't a lot but like i was i, I saw it in the window and i said to my parents like oh my god you know i want that you know like i, I remember like just before my fifth birthday like pointing it at the window and be like oh you know i, I need this like I'm, i want the star wars thing so my parents were probably like, yeah, decent. <laughs> it was like three quid or something like that. Like, <laughs> and it came with like, it came with like 3PO and Chewy. Oh my so God. Like, yeah, like came with all these like characters inside that were just like thrown in. We had like the Rancor. We had like an AT-AT. We had an ATST. Like we had all these toys that were kind of like hand-me-downs from like older kids that maybe like my parents were friends with that had like star wars figures when they were kids that were a lot older now and they just didn't want them anymore so they, we had like all these hand-me-downs of like star wars toys given to us when we were children you so like I still got entire, like, watching them on tv and like having the toys and then never having a star wars movie so sorry this is a really long tangent getting back onto oh, the no, so like so when the phantom menace did come out i was like yeah this is gonna be dope you know like you saw like Darth Maul with his lightsaber, like watching the ship fly away. I was just like, "Oh my god, this is this is what I've been waiting for," you know. And I remember when the reviews were coming out, and everyone was like slating it. I remember like seeing people talking about it on TV, and they're like, "Oh, you know, what was that? Like, this isn't this wasn't this isn't what I signed up for." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But, and you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. To this day, like even when I watched it, like uh, like a couple of months ago during lockdown, like when I was doing some work. I still don't understand like the politic parts of those first movies. Like it just goes right over my head. Like the droids and the trade federation and like <laughs> the, the conversation. Whenever that, whenever they're sat down doing their like, they're you know like in the Phantom Menace where they're sat and they're like and they're talking about like hostage situations and God knows what and in their talks with the the Naboo. I'm just like my brain switches off. I'm like just just you know like, let's let's get to the pod racing let's get to the jedi fights i'm not yeah I'm not, it's like i'm not like, into, i'm not into the politics of star wars all i know the politics is empire and rebels that's it 
And like, uh, it always just kind of goes over my head that bit. But yeah, sorry. Okay, long tangent. Um, I, I did apologize before I came on. I would do this, no, but like, yeah, Jar Jar. No, like, good. yeah, he you're was good. dumb. Like, he's a dumb character, but like, he he he's not the worst thing in Star Wars anymore. I don't feel so. Like, there no, are things that no, no. definitely things in canon now that I despise more than Jar Jar being. So, um, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, you know, you you spoke of Adat by the way too. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I love your opinion on Star Wars. It's it's so enlightening and so happiness compared to other people I know in Star Wars. It's great. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, that's right. Star Wars is fun. Uh, yeah, Star Wars is fun. Like that's the way I always that's that's always been my, you know, my take on it. You know, but I don't like there's there's not one Star Wars movie I just like. You know, like I can I can enjoy them for what they are. At the end of the day, there's things that I would like to have seen been done differently. <laughs> you know, there's choices in the newer movies that I just did not like or care for. But like, yeah, doesn't mean I hate those films. You know, like I can't hate a Star Wars film. I can still enjoy it for what it is. You know, like I enjoyed the heck out of Solo when I saw. I've only ever seen Solo the once, and I know there's a lot of problems with that film. But like when I went to see it at the cinema, I had a really good time. You know, and that's kind of all yeah. I wanted. You know, there were a lot of things in that movie that are dumb, but at the same time, you know. I'm glad I watched it, and I, you know, I, I, it, I would watch a sequel. Of, you know, if they went on and it was successful, and they did another one with the same actor and the same cast, you know, like and continued that story, I would have been up for that because, like, it would have been cool to see him meet Jabba for the first time or continue yeah, that. that Greedo thing. for the like, first time, that would have been pretty cool. I feel like there's there's like two schools of Star Wars. There's there's the the, the people that you know you always see these discourses on Twitter where people like they treat Star Wars like it's. You know, like the Citizen Kane of sci-fi when it's not. You know, like, oh, man, you know, like the Mandalorian's so dumb, man. Like, it should be like Breaking Bad. Ugh. It's just the city. And it's like, it's Star Wars, man. Like, what? You know, why, what, what do you want from it? It's not supposed to be Breaking Bad. It's Star Wars. It's serialized. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. Like, people, yeah. when Rogue One came out, like, I remember when I first saw the trailers of Rogue One and I was so indifferent about it. And you know what? Like, I love Rogue One, but, like, it's also, like, the dullest movie for me in the star wars movies you know like it's because dark it's, it is the darkest it just takes itself too seriously sometimes and like as much as i adore that film it's a great film like it's the hardest one for me to watch without kind of losing interest mm. it points because it is it doesn't feel like it, it's weird it doesn't feel magical you know because it is a dark tale like it, it's, it's an important tale and like i'm glad it exists but at the same time it's also yeah, like there's 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 different parts of Star Wars that I love for different reasons, you know. But Mandalorian is a fun it's fun for me. Like it's a cool cool show. Whereas like again, like I, there's you know like the the newer trilogy has its issues, but there's a lot in the newer trilogy that I love that I wish I would have seen more of in the other films. You know, yeah. like the emotional bits in the newer ones are really. You know, like, I guess, like, they play up on, on the emotional beats in the new ones a lot more than they really should. But, like, you know, you don't really feel that in the prequels. The prequels kind of feel hollow in that sense. Like, even even when you get to, like, Return of the Sith, which is, like, arguably the best um, prequel, you know, like, even the emotional beats in that film feel robotic <laughs> you know like they feel they don't some feel, yeah yeah and that's that's something where it just doesn't yeah. doesn't really hit home you don't you don't believe in the i don't believe in the relationship between padme and in and, and anakin the same way i do like say han and leia you know like mm. the which is weird like because you don't really see their relationship unfold massively on screen like you do but you believe it more because of they're, they're such good character actors if you know what i mean like they're so it's good true. at portraying and, and you can believe it um but i um, mean yeah, maybe i'm being a bit harsh like they are emotional they they, they like the they, they had a lot they had a lot to work with in those in those prequel trilogies they had a lot of stories to tell but, but yeah you know what? Um, my my prequel man is and a lot of people i i'm with you i'm like i like the prequel movies i really do and to me, though, my prequels is always going to be that Clone Wars TV show because to me, that knocked the movies out of the park. Oh, especially yeah. Especially how it ended. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Like, only recently as well. It's so cool. Like, getting that just before we got the got the second season of The Mandalorian was so yeah. cool because yeah. just getting to feel... It feels like there's some sort of, like, decent continuation going on now with those characters, which is really cool. And I'm super stoked for this Obi-Wan series now that they said that Hayden Christensen's coming back to play God, Vader. I'd love, 
so interested to see like um but like part of me was torn because it was like you know like in a new hope when sorry this is turned into the star wars podcast but um <laughs> no it's all good um you know like vader's like i sense a present that i've not sensed so uh, since you know like and he pauses so it's like you know and then obi-wan turns up and it's like okay so like usually you're like okay he's not sense obi-wan's presence since he like sliced his legs off and like let him slip into fiery death and then just like walked away and didn't put him out of his misery <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's, like, you know, you know like, he, that was the last time he just kind of like looked in was, oh. right anyway i'm off anakin take it easy like um but you're like yeah he's not sensed that that's kind of what you expect and that's kind of why that you know like them being reunited that way is is like a big deal for both of them like on the death star that's why he, yeah. he wants to win them so like as excited i am for this new series like i'm torn of like whether i, I want them to see each other again or if they're just going to tell this separate story between the two of them um i think it's going to be a show of flashbacks we're going to see a lot of flash i think we're going to see like flashbacks to the clone wars i think we're going to see flashbacks to maybe like Phantom, like the movies and stuff like that too. Maybe alternate scenes that we see in there, I mean, and then I think yeah, that 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 could work. I mean, or conversations between the two of them somehow that would be through some kind of like, you know, like the way that Ray and 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 maybe uh, Kylo were speaking, you know, where they conversed like through. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would be very interesting. You know, I don't like, know how like, long it would last, because then Vader would be like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to try to find you now. <laughs> like, oh, wait, no. Well, yeah, but, like, like Kylo couldn't work out where Rey was until he pulled something out from where she was. So, like, I don't think he would know that he was on Tatooine. But, yeah, it'd be interesting yeah. to find out, like, that would be interesting to see how they do that. It would be, it'd be really cool. Like, when I was, like, I saw pictures of him recently hitting Christensen, and he looks the same as he did. So, like, you know, like everyone has an issue with. I, I remember I tweeted something out similarly, but like at the end of Return of the Jedi, when they show his Force Ghost, um, he's the dude. You know, he's he's Anakin from <laughs> from the prequel yeah, trilogy. Yeah, yeah. You're like, like wait, like, why? But like, this is the thing, right? Um, in like the timeline of Star Wars, like Vader was forty when he died. Like in like if you if if you count from the day that he was born, like well, kind of they worked someone worked out on on Wiki that to the day of his death when Luke when he when he dies from saving Luke, he was like forty five or something like that, forty four. Mm. But like the actor that played him, I can't think of his name. Like I'm sorry, um, he was like in his eighties or something like that. Like the guy that portrayed him in the movies, and obviously they didn't know that at the time. They didn't know that they were going to go back and do the prequels. But Hadian Christensen is like 40 now, right? He just turned 40. So like if Vader was like 45 and Hadian Christensen still kind of looks the same as he did, like if you if you Google him now, he looks the same as he did. He doesn't really look like he's 40. He still looks like he's in his late 30s. He doesn't really look that different. So like in a weird way, like that force ghost that turns up of him at the end with like Yoda and Obi-Wan is kind of that's what he would look like because he was younger than Obi-Wan. He was a lot younger than Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan would have been like this old dude. And he would have been a forty-four, you know, like a forty-five-year-old man that kind of still looks hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, <want him. laughs> I did not expect the last bit there. That's great. I did. You know what? I want to like take this sound clip of that explanation and put it out there and just be like to anyone who hated on Hayden Christensen being in there because my mind is blown because I'm like, oh my fucking god, that works. Oh my God! <laughs> that yeah, really it, does, works. it doesn't excuse it, but it works. Like that was yeah, my... yes, yes, <laughs> it, it, yeah. It makes sense. It's like, oh my God, it does make sense. Why didn't anybody say this before? I mean, like, well, they didn't know, did they? They didn't know how he was going to turn out. But like, that's true. It, you know, they didn't know when they made this. Like, I still stand the original where it's not him, and it's it's you know it's oh God, it's, it sucks. That I can't think of his name right now. Um, oh, someone will let us know. Someone will definitely let us know. Um that portrayed him because that's the way I've always known it. And it always felt really jarring seeing him turn up in a movie trilogy that he wasn't part of, like the, that trilogy. But, you know, like when I watched it all back to back recently, it made total sense. I was like, hey, you know, that does kind of make sense. So I did, you know, like I looked up into Vader's age and how old he was. There's no way 
between Luke being born and him looking as young as he did to <laughs> Luke being like in his twenties, he's just this old dude, you know, like he's this old man. So it, yeah, you know, he would have only been like 20 years old, 18, 20, 20 or so years older than he was when he became Vader. So, you know, if he was in his twenties when he became Vader, yeah, he'd be 45, like 40 ish mid mid forties. Oh my god! Um, I'm looking at well, the time. Yeah. I'm looking at the time, man. We we are almost at an hour. I'm like, oh my god, we've been talking forever. <laughs> oh shit! I didn't even know. Yeah, we've not. We, we haven't really spoke. What were we supposed to be talking? <laughs> I mean, you know, that's the beauty of this show, though, boss. It's like I like to bring people on, fellow comic creators and stuff like that, and we just we just have a good time. And it's like people. That's why people are like, oh, you run a show. It's like, yeah, is it like time? Like. I often say, like, I don't like the time interview magazine sort of thing like that. I'm like, you know, let's just bring people on and just, let's have a good talk and just see what happens and see what we talk about and shit. Like, just, I, I like once I had a, oh, God, I don't remember. I won't say who it was, but there was an episode we had on and it was someone who may or may not have worked on some famous stuff at DC and Batman. And we were talking like about like fun sex stories and stuff like this. You don't know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> so it's like the weird, it's the craziest shit. I mean, no, we 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 covered comics, but the thing is, like, we're both Star Wars nerds. Nerds, so if you get us started, we're just, we will go on as we work. Because I was like, man, we could talk about this. Like, I looked at the recording time. I'm like, oh wow, <laughs> oh wow. Um, but yeah, because I don't want to take too much of your time, man, today. But yeah, I def- I'm, I'm good. Like, it's a Sunday. Like, I've got stuff I need to be doing today, but we're all good. Like, I have no plans but to work today because because all the schools are locked down here. I'm I'm homeschooling during the week, so the weekend is like is my work week you know like i'm I'm working and, and doing stuff to promote the book so we're all good fair enough man all right Just, sorry i have to i have to correct this give me two seconds before i don't want people to think that i don't know this yeah that's not right Uh-oh. it's just prowse which is interesting because david prowse is from somerset where i'm from um that's the actor that portrayed him in the suit um uh, yeah, I'm, he used to do this thing in the UK called the Green Cross Code Man, and he was like, he took his head across the road, you know. But hello there, I'm David Prowse. This is how you call you. Know? <laughs> uh, Sebastian Shaw. No, that's not right. <laughs> I was like, oh, wait a minute, dude. What, yeah, what's what, Sebastian Shaw? <laughs> what the hell? All right. <laughs> yeah, sorry. For some reason, my brain went like. Um, uh, when I was reading that out, it was like Sebastian Stan. And I was like, yeah, wait, but wait, I thought too, I'm like, what is Alter? What the fuck? What is that? What? I was like, no, he didn't play this dude. No. This guy gets a bad. Wasn't he supposed to play Luke? Like, I was just like, hey, that makes sense though. You know, yeah. it's his dad. That, you know why? Be... It's still in the realm of possibilities. Um, I'd be, I'd be down with that. Like they've done it with Han and like, as long as it's, I feel like, I know it would be weird, like, but then like, you know, like Obi-Wan's played by a different actor in the New Hope, he's played by a different actor. in. So like, if it was done like in a way where it felt natural, I feel like he would probably be the best. I mean, it would be cool. Like, do you remember that film Looper where they gave, it was kind of jarring and weird. I haven't seen that film since it came out, but do you remember what they gave like, um, uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, like, kind of like, I don't know if it was like prosthetics or CGI to make him look a bit like Bruce Willis. Have you seen yeah, that film? Yeah, that was kind of weird. They're like, yeah, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's older self is Bruce Willis. I'm like, what? Yeah, like, so they gave him like this weird prosthetic. You know, kind, of, kind of, but like, that maybe that was like a bit more, but it, it was convincing, you know, you could kind of believe it in a weird way. But like, if Sebastian Stan just had like, tiny, you know, like a tiny bit of like, CG or makeup on his face, just something that kind of sold it a bit more, you know, like a little bit more on the idea. Because I still, I still think that as long as it feels like Luke, I feel like people would, people would go along with it. I know it would be a bit weird because you have, well, I mean, you have it with Han Solo as well. But like, if you had like, you had like Mark Hamill's Luke, and then you had Sebastian Stan's Luke, and then you had like Old Man Luke that was. Mark Hamill again, like it's a bit weird, but then at the same time, the Clone Wars was an animated series, which is some of the best Star Wars, and they're all voiced by different people, and you still believe yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like as long as the story's strong enough that you enjoy it, I feel like 
I, I would not care. Like, it's, it's the story at the end of the day. It's the characters. I mean, like, yeah, it would be amazing if it wasn't some kind of, like, de-aged Mark Hamill. But, you know, I would... I, I just want that content. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I want, I'd like, pay for it. I mean, shit. Mandalorian ending. Sorry, spoilers if you've not seen it. But, like, Jesus, like... I was just like... I was just like, yeah, we need more Luke. I, like, I just want more Luke in my life oh, after they that. Know. Like, they know. They definitely know. We've got Ahsoka coming in our own TV show. We, they know, man. They... Listen, they want our money, and they're gonna get it. <laughs> That's like they're definitely gonna get the money for emerging. I'm super excited to see that, like Lucas Arts have like done a deal now where they've got Star Wars back as a property to like make more games. And, and like Indiana Jones uh, and Indiana Jones, yeah, yeah, and with Sam and Max and like all these cool IPs that just kind of I want to see all that stuff come back. Um, it's true, it's true. Well, man, we are at the end of the show though. So I don't know. I know some sort of oh, where they. Huh? Yeah. No, I was saying we are at the end of the show though, man, because it's like an hour. Oh. <laughs> it's like, okay, and I know nice. like fans get mad. No, no, it's we could go on and on and on. Trust me, we really could. I, I really because I'm like, yeah, yeah, we got this, and we are entering a whole new realm of like Disney Plus, like shows we're gonna want and shit. We, we can't. <laughs> fans are gonna be like, what the hell? Um, but man, I want to say because I want to turn it over to you though for some important stuff here is promote yourself good man like anything coming out that people want to go pick up or people can yeah, go pick up or go check out does, when does when does this ish, uh, this episode drop this i just want to make sure the right episode will be dropping not tomorrow but it's going to be dropping so it'll be dropping the well, let me give you a specific date here the 25th okay so we so what i'm promoting right now is obviously homesick pilots my image comic which is a What's the best way to describe it? It's a nine, 90s punk rock uh, kids pilot a haunted house like a mech and fight other big ghosts the size of mechs. <laughs> or like Kaiji, basically. Um, and it's super fun. It's quite gory. It's quite horrific. But also not like I think it's funny. Um, and we have two issues out. Uh, issue three is out in February. So if you're able to pick up the first two issues, go check it out, um, which is still available, uh, you know, like if you can get to a comic book store or comicsology. And then anything else coming out that I might need to promote? I don't think so. That's it. Like I said, uh, the, I don't remember if this was at the beginning of the podcast before we were talking, but yeah, like this is all I've been working on. I've got yeah. some stuff that's actually going to be announced soon that I'm going to be working on soon, but I can't talk about it right now, which is annoying because it's not actually been announced yet, but that should be, yeah. you know, like uh, early this year as well. But we, just we. You know, find me at Casper Nova on Twitter and um, Casper Wingard on Instagram, and I'll be posting about that stuff anyway, if you're interested. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's pretty that's much been, it. Awesome, man. This has been a blast. Like this is, this has been a, Big blast, and you're welcome back anytime on the podcast because shit. Yeah, if you want to like, do a Star Wars yeah, show, yeah, we should do Star Wars it. cast. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> if you're ever doing you... anything like that, bring me on, man. I, I love, I love, you know, shooting the shit about Star Wars. I could do that all day. So, your Star Wars special, I would definitely bring you down. There would be oh, <laughs> we do a big, huge round table of I bring on everyone who, who I know and have had on the podcast who've done and from buddies of mine who worked on Star Wars, whether or not I mean, because I know some people who worked in the Star Wars movies. Oh, we could do cool. a big round table. That would be amazing. Oh. Yeah, I would love it. Like, yeah, Star Wars is just... I, w I don't want to say it's my life right now, but it really. But I mean, like, pop culture-wise, like, I just cannot get enough of it. I know everyone's kind of like, oh, you know, it's, um, there's just too much now. It's not the same. And it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side of the... Of the <laughs> Let's be know? honest. The Star Wars world is way better than our world right now. <laughs> so it's a yeah, way better I, one to go I, live in. I will consume Star Wars in any which way form until, you know, I don't think I could ever get bored of it. I, I just, like, I know you've got to go, but like, like I said, like I just download, re-downloaded um, Jedi Fallen Order because I have a PS5. Luckily, I can't believe I was even able to get one, but they just did the enhanced kind of like, you know, like the update for it where it's kind of like it runs like a, like, for the PS5 now, like a lot, a lot better. So I was just like, I'm gonna replay that game. So like, I was just like, awesome. I'm, I'm jumping, jumping back in, like in my free time, just because I need more Star Wars after, <laughs> after the Mandalorian finished. That's true. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, I've, yeah. I've been watching Clone Wars with my girlfriend. Oh yeah. But thank you, good man. And you take care. Okay. 
Hey, you too, man. Take, take it easy. Thanks for having me on. Bye. Bye.